you know, a convoy of 27 army trucks carrying food and other essential supplies to cater for 250 people for a week arrived in the town around 5 o'clock this evening after their journey was delayed due to yesterday's bad weather. Remember, road access is everything. Earlier this afternoon, I spoke with our reporter Max Toll, who just returned from making a short trip up the inland road himself. John, today I uh, caught a lift with an old mate of RNZ. His name's Bob. He actually lent the team a ute the first three days we were here. Mm -hmm. Bob took us beyond the cordon of the inland road. Now, that's the road that's been cut off, but authorities are trying to open it as soon as possible, and then it will be uh, the only way in and out by ground for people in Kaikoura. Bob has been doing some forestry work along the road, so he was able to take us past the cordon about 40, 50 kilometres inland, so we got to see a good look at the road. While we were driving, we uh, stopped at a farm owned by Rachel Bartram, and she had quite an interesting story to tell me. We are on the top floor of a, um, a house that was, well, parts built in the 1860s and 1890s, so once the second or first quake had finished and we managed to get the children all together with us um, the second quake hit so we sheltered by the bed as the chimneys all double breasted chimneys all fell around us and and once that stopped we all managed to jump out the upstairs window down onto a little veranda and then jump out onto the garden except for young Henry who managed to slide down onto the concrete and uh, but, but we, we're fine, we're all, yeah, a few, lots of scrapes and bruises and a few stitches and things, but we're, we're good as gold, we, we, we're really lucky. So, so did you jump a story? We did. And that's how you got, an, I see you've got an injury on your hands? Oh, uh, yeah, no, um, we, yeah, we just, uh, I guess we'd always worried about fire, are we, but, and we've got one escape heading out, but we knew that the, the window at the front of the house was also another option of getting out if we could, so we'd always practised what we'd do, well, not actually jumping out the window, but talked about what we'd do with the children if anything like that happened, so they were amazing. They did exactly what they needed to do, stayed really calm, and but the force was horrific. We just, yeah, we, we couldn't stand, couldn't hear, the, the noise was insane. But And you're currently living without... Uh... Do you have power? No, no power. Um, no water? No water at present. We're trying to get, we've, we've got spring fed water here, so we're trying for also for stock, not just for us, to get up um, a creek where, where the source of the water is. I think it's, there's silt blocking the line. Um, but at present, just because of the weather conditions, it's just, there's too many slips, it's too dangerous to get up there, so we'll we'll try again when things settle down a wee bit. Um, and you're about 18k in land. How many times have you made the trip into Kaikoura? Uh, on the second second day after the quake, we went into Kaikoura, went up to the medical centre, got Henry's leg stitched that he had cut and my hand fixed up, and my 88-year-old mum was downstairs when the quake hit, and so we managed to get her on a chopper out to back into Wood End, which was fantastic. So, so we did all of that. We also run a farm stay here, so we were full with guests um, from the Netherlands. So we we looked after them, and they left us um, on the third day after the quake. On that big boat. Um, they actually had a, a plane chartered with oh, travel really? since. They were very lucky. They were going to go on the boat though, but they they found out once once we because we had no way of knowing really what was going on communication wise until we got into Kaikoura then so we, we managed to let family know and that we were all okay and and, uh, and that, that was the main thing I think yeah. Max that is such an incredible story the people from the Netherlands staying the kind of resilience the optimism the determination to overcome the original evacuation in the earthquake and I'm uh, super impressed for people watching it you shot that on your phone Max magnificent work what was that road like getting in and out of there yeah look uh, we did get 50 k's along it but uh, you know we were in a big a big ute I wouldn't recommend it for anything smaller than that the first 20 k's are sort of like your typical country track it's a bit bumpy a bit lumpy but once you get towards the mountains, that's when it gets really tricky. There are slips, a lot of, uh, quite a few small slips, but a few big slips as well that you can see had come down across the whole road. 
they've been swept to one side, so you've got one lane open. But if you just look at that rock face hanging over, it looks pretty ominous. We got as far as the Conway River, which uh, there's a long bridge that goes over it and just looking at it, it it's sort of bow shaped it dips right down and back up I wasn't too confident about going over it I sort of clenched my cheeks as we drove over it but we were assured it was safe we talked to some construction workers on the other side and they said we couldn't go any further they didn't want to be interviewed uh, I think that's a word from head office but they did say the road is passable uh, but uh, look, look coming back I don't think passable is good enough Max Toll talking to us from Kaikoura earlier this afternoon